Louis Marie Uncouperus was a Dutch novelist and poet. His oeuvre contains a wide variety of genres. Lyric poetry, psychological and historical novels, novellas, short stories, fairy tales, fultons and sketches. Cuperus is considered to be one of the foremost figures in Dutch literature. In 1923, he was awarded the Tollens Prize. Cuperus and his wife traveled extensively in Europe and Asia, and he later wrote several related travel logs which were published weekly. Youth. Louis Marie Uncouperus was born on 10 June 1863 at Moritz Gade 11 in The Hague, Netherlands. He was the 11th and youngest child of John Rickus Cooperus and Katharina Geertrude de Reinst. Four of the ten siblings had died before Louis was born. Cooperus was baptized on 19 July 1863 in the Egg Lease Wallone in The Hague. When Louis reached the age of five, his youngest sister, Trudy, was 12 years old and his youngest brother, Franz, 11. In The Hague he followed lessons at the boarding school of Mr. Wires, where he first met his later friend Henry van Boeven. On 6 November 1872 the Cooperus family left home, traveled by train to Den Helder and embarked on the steamboat Prince Hendrik, which would bring them to the Dutch East Indies. They arrived on 31 December 1872 in Batavia, where they spent the night at the then-famous Hotel des Indus. The family settled in a house in Batavia, located on the Koningsplein and the mother of Cooperus and his brother Franz returned to the Netherlands in December 1873, his mother returned to the Dutch East Indies in April 1874, so Cooperus spent part of his youth in the Dutch East Indies, going to school in Batavia. Here he met his cousin, Elizabeth Cooperus Board, for the first time. In his novel De Zawalu and Neerdstrecken, he wrote about his youth. We are cousins and have played together. We dance together at children's balls. We still have our baby pictures. She was dressed in a marquise dress and I was dressed as a page. My garment was made of black velvet and I was very proud of my first travesty in the Dutch East Indies. Cuperus also met his future brother-in-law for the first time, Gerard de la Vallette, who wrote in 1913 about his relationship with Cuperus. We met first at Batavia, when he was a boy of ten years and I was a young man. We saw each other at rather large intervals. Yet I saw him often enough, as a boy and a young man, that we developed a good and familiar relationship. After he finished primary school, Cooperus attended the gymnasium Willem III in Batavia. In the summer of 1878, Cooperus and his family returned to the Netherlands, where they went to live in a house at the Nassau Cade 4. In The Hague, Cooperus was sent to the HBS school. During this period of his life, he spent a lot of time at the Vlielander Hein family. Later their son, François Emile Vlielander Hein, was his favorite nephew, who helped him with his literary work. At the HBS Cooperus met his later friend Franz Netscher. During this period of his life, he read the novels written by Emile Zola and Weider. When Cooperus' school results did not improve, his father sent him to a school where he was trained to be a teacher in the Dutch language. In 1883 he attended the opera written by Charles Gounard La Tribute de Zamora. He later used elements of this opera in his novel Aline Veer, start of Cooperus' career as a writer. In 1885 plans were made to compose an operetta for children. Virginie La Chapelle wrote the music, and Cooperus provided the lyrics for the schooner Sleapster in Het Bosch. The opera was staged by a hundred children at the Koninklijke in The Hague. In January 1885 Cooperus had already written one of his early poems, called Cleopatra. Other writings from this period include the sonnet in Portrait and U. W. Glimlich of U. W. Blowman. In 1882, Cooperus started reading Petrarch and had the intention to write a novel about him, which was never realized. 
although he did publish the novella in Hetwe Bij den Dom, loosely inspired by Plutarch. When Cooperus just had finished his novella in Midig Bij Vespaziano, he visited Johannes Bosboom and his wife Anna Luisa Geertrida Bosboom to San, whose works Cooperus greatly admired. Cooperus let Mrs. Bosboom to San read his novella, which she found very good. In 1883 Cooperus started writing Laura. This novella was published in parts in the GIDs in 1883 and 1884. In 1885 Cooperus a debut in book form, in Lent van Verzen was published. In these days a person Cooperus greatly admired for his sense of beauty and intelligence was writer Karel Vosmar, whom he frequently met while walking in the center of The Hague. In 1883 Cooperus saw Sarah Bernhardt performing in The Hague, but was more impressed by her dresses than her performance itself. The next year, John Rickus Cooperus, father of Louis Cooperus, sold his family estate, Tijacopo, located in the Dutch East Indies and gave order to build a house at the shore in Amstrat 20, The Hague. Here Cooperus continued writing poetry and his study of Dutch literature. In June 1885 he was appointed member of the very prestigious March Appage den Ederland Seletic under, two years after he published Hawkerdine, in Bundle Poesie en Prosa, which had received mixed reviews. Journalist Willem Gerard van Nuys wrote that Orkadine lacked quality, Jacob Nicolas van Hall was positive, and Willem Clues called it literary crap. Cooperus passed his exam on 6 December 1886 and received his certificate, which allowed him to teach at secondary schools. However, he did not aspire to a teaching career and decided to continue writing literature instead. At the end of 1887 he started to write what was to become his most famous novel, Aline Veer. Aline Veer, The Beginning of Success Shortly before Cooperus wrote Aline Veer, he had read War and Peace and Anna Karenina, written by Leo Tolstoy. The structure of Cooperus a book Aline Veer was similar to that of Anna Karenina. He had also just read Ghosts, a play written by Henry Gibson. Reference to the leading character of Ghosts is made when Aline Veer is delirious with fever and cries, Oh God, the Ghosts approaching grinning, also the suicide by the main characters in Aline Veer and in Ghosts by taking an overdose of morphine is the same, between the 17th of June until the 4th of December 1888. The novel Aline Veer was published in the Dutch newspaper Het Vaderland, a reviewer in the Algemeen Handelsblad wrote, the writer has talent. Meanwhile, Cooperus wrote a novella called Dean Stir, which was published in Netherland and made a journey to Sweden. In this period of his life, Cooperus was an active member of the drama club of writer Marcel Emantes, and here he met a new friend, Johan Hendrik Ram, a captain of the Grenadiers, who would later commit suicide. In April 1890 the newer GIDs published a review of Aline Veer, written by Lodewijk van Dessel, in which he wrote, The novel of Mr. Cooperus is a good and a literary work. Cooperus also met a new friend, writer Moritz Wage and Vaught, who invited Cooperus and painter George Hendrik Breitner to his home. A second edition of Aline Veer was published within a year. Cooperus finished his next novel, Nude a Lot, in May 1890. This novel was then published in the GIDs. It is possible that the leading character of Nude a Lot, Frank, was inspired by the character of Cooperus a friend, Johann Hendrik Ram, a strong and healthy military person. Cooperus now started reading Paul Bourdais' novel and Cœur de Femme, which inspired him during the writing of his novella Extaza. In July 1890 he completed E. E. N. E. Illusion on 12 August 1890 received the prestigious D.A. Thema Price. In October that same year, he travelled to Paris, where he received a letter from his publisher to be, L.J. Veen, asking permission to publish Nudelot, which offer Cooperus rejected because this book was supposed to be published by Elsevier. When his uncle Guillaume Louis Bord died, Cooperus went back to The Hague to attend the funeral. 
Here Cooperus decided to marry his cousin Elizabeth Cooperus Board. The marriage took place on 9 September 1891 in The Hague. More successes as a writer. On 21 September 1891, Cooperus and his wife settled in a small villa at the Rochesweg in Hilversum. After Cooperus finished his new book Extaza in October 1891 he wrote. You at Sicton and started with his new romantic and spiritual novella Epilogue. Extaza was published in 1892 in the GIDs, and Cooperus asked publisher L.J. Veen to publish it as a novel, but refused the offer Veen made him. In 1891 an English translation of Nudelot, Footsteps of Fate, and in 1892 an English translation of Aline Veer were released. Meanwhile, L.J. Veen made Cooperus a better offer, which he accepted, and Cooperus received from Oscar Wilde his novel The Picture of Dorian Gray. Wilde had read the translation of Cooperus A Footsteps of Fate, and wrote to Cooperus to compliment him with his book. Elizabeth Cooperus Board translated Wilde's novel into Dutch. Het Portrait van Dorian Gray Dutch critics wrote divergent reviews about Extaza. Writer and journalist Henry Borrell said that the book was something like a young boy messing with an egg, while Lodewijk van Dessel found it great. Frederick van Eden wrote that he had a specific aversion against the book. Cooperus and his wife moved to The Hague, where Cooperus wrote Majestate. After he had read an article in the Illustrated London News about Nicholas II of Russia, Jarrett Yeager, a playwright, wrote a theatre performance of Nude a Lot. It was performed in 1892 by the Rotterdam Theatre Company, and the then famous Dutch actor Willem Royards, who was an acquaintance of Cooperus, played one of the leading characters. On 1 February 1893 Cooperus and his wife left for Florence, but they had to return because of the death of Cooperus and mother. He wrote about how she rested on her deathbed in his novel Metamorphosa. During this time Elizabeth Cooperus Board was translating George Moore's novel Vain Fortune, while Majestate was published in the GIDs. In 1894 Cooperus joined the editorial board of the GIDs. Other members were Gertrudis Cornelis Willem Bivank, Jacob Nicolaas van Hall, Anton Gerard van Hamel, Ambrosius Herbrecht and Peter Court van der Linden. In September 1893 Cooperus and his wife left for Italy for the second time. In Florence they stayed in a pension close to the Santa Maria novella. Here Cooperus wrote in November 1893 a sketch, Annunciation, a literary description of the painting of the same name by Simone Martini and Lippo Memma in the Uffizi Gallery. In December Cooperus and his wife visited Rome, where Cooperus wrote San Pietro, Pincio, Michelangelo's Cupola, Via Appia and Brief UIT Rome. In these works, Cooperus gave references to the works he had read about Rome, Ariadne by Weeder, Rienzi by Bulwer, Transformation by Hawthorne, Voyage in Italia by Tyne and Cosmopolitis by Borde. In February 1894 Cooperus travelled to Naples and Athens, and then returned to Florence, where he visited Weida. Cooperus and his wife returned to the Netherlands, where Elizabeth Cooperus Board made a translation of George Moore's Vain Fortune. They went to live in the house of the Jacob van der Straat 123. During this time Gerrit Jaeger committed suicide by drowning. Cuperus now started working on what was to become Worldwood and wrote a translation of Florbit's La Tentation de Saint Antoine, Consolidation Phase. In 1894 an English translation was made by Alexander Teixeira de Matos of Majestate. Reviewers were not satisfied. And in the Netherlands Cooper's new novel Worldwood was seen by critics as a flat novel intended for women. Apart from that Lodewijk van der Sool wrote a review in which he asked Cooper's to get lost, and Cooper's himself ended his editorship at the GIDs. In October 1895 Cooperus and his wife travelled to Italy again, where they visited Venice. They stayed at a hotel near the Piazza San Marco, and Cooperus studied the works of Dinteretto, Titian and Veronese. 
The next city they visited was Rome, where Cooperus would receive a number of bad reviews of his book World Vid. In Rome he met Dutch sculptor Pierre Pandar and Dutch painter Peter de Josselin de Jong. In March 1896 Cooperus and his wife returned to the Netherlands. In 1896 Hodger Troven was published with a book cover designed by Hendrik Petrus Berlage, and in April 1896 Cooperus started writing Metamorphosa. In September Cooperus visited Johann Hendrik Ram in Zeist, where Ram stayed with his father. Cooperus spoke with Ram about Metamorphosa. That same year, Cooperus spent some time in Paris. In 1897, Cooperus finished writing Metamorphosa, which was to be published in the GIDs. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Cooperus Board translated Olive Schreiner's Trooper Peter Halkett of Mashonaland. That same year, Cooperus and his wife left for Dresden but also spent some time in Heidelberg. In August 1897 Cooperus started with his new book Psyche and was appointed officer in the Order of Orange Nassau. In January 1898, the GID started publishing chapters of Psyche. In February 1898 Cooperus travelled to Berlin, where he visited L. Sotten, the German translator of his books and who would also translate Psyche into German. With Elizabeth Cooperus board he left the Netherlands in May 1898 for a short trip to London, where they met friends and visited Ascot Racecourse. Alexander Teixeira de Matos introduced Cooperus and his wife during a high tea to English, journalists and literary people. Cooperus also met Edmund Goss, who had written a foreword to Footsteps of Fate in 1891, and English painter Lawrence Alma Tadema who was a brother-in-law of Goss. Via Oxford, Cooperus and his wife returned to the Netherlands, where he finished Fidesa in December 1898. Cooperus and his wife then left for the Netherlands Dutch Indies and arrived at the end of March 1899 in Tanjung Priok. In June they visited Cooperus' sister Trudy and her husband Gerard Vallet, who was working as a resident at Tegel. Here Cooperus started to write his new novel, Langs Lane in der Geladelikeid. When Gerard Vallet and his wife had to move to Pasuruin because of Vallet's work, Cooperus and his wife spent some time in Gabro, where Cooperus observed a spirit. This experience he would later use in his novel The Hidden Force. After The Hidden Force, many of the details about the life and works of a resident in the Dutch East Indies Cooperus derived from his brother-in-law de la Vallet. He characterized the hidden forces. The hidden force gives back especially the enmity of the mysterious Javanese soul and atmosphere, fighting against the Dutch conqueror. Meanwhile, Cooperus received a letter from his friend Johann Hendrik Ram, in which Ram wrote that he and Lieutenant Lodewijk Thompson were about to travel to South Africa to follow the course of the Boer Wars as military diplomats. In March 1900 Cooperus and his wife travelled back to the Netherlands, where in the GIDs the text of Inevitable was published. In October 1900 Cooperus and his wife moved to Nice, where Cooperus read Henrik Sienkiewicz with fire and sword, the deluge and quo vadis while his own The Hidden Force was published in the Netherlands. Meanwhile, Cooperus started to work on his new novels Babel and De Burke and Air Kleiner Zeelen. In 1902 he was asked to become a member of the editorial board of a new magazine called Groot Nederland, together with W.G. Van Nuys and Cyril Beiser. In October 1902 Cooperus' a father died at the age of 86. His house at Schorenheim Straat 20, The Hague was eventually sold to Conrad Theodore Vane de Venter. Cooperus and his wife kept living in Nice, but Cooperus went in January 1903 to Rome, where he met Pierre Pandar again and also received a letter from his publisher L.J. Veen, in which he complained that Cooperus' books did not sell. In May 1903 Cooperus published Dionyso's study in Groot Nederland in which Cooperus paid tribute to classical antiquity and especially to the god Dionysus. 
Cuperus left that year again for Italy and went to Nice in September. During the winter of 1903-1904, he read Jean Le Lombard's work about Roman Emperor El Argabalus. In 1903 Georges Duvicay published his Elio Gabala, which was just what Cuperus needed for his idea to write a novel about a crazy emperor. Meanwhile, to pay his bills, he wrote Van Auder Menchin, De Dingen, Die Vorbij Gan. In 1905 he published De Berg van Licht, which was rather controversial as it dealt with the subject of homosexuality. In 1906 Cooperus and his wife left for Bagnai di Luca, where they stayed at Hotel Continental and were introduced to Eleonora Juice. In May 1907 A.A.N. Den Weg der a novella Cooperus wrote while staying at Bagnai di Luca, was published in Groot, Netherland. He received another letter from L.J. Veen, saying that Cooperus a books did not sell well, and Sir Cooperus wrote a farewell letter to Veen in which he told Veen this was the end of their business relationship. During the summer of 1907 Cooperus wrote in Siena the story UIT de Juke van San Francesco van Assisi to be published in Groot, Netherland. From this period on Cooperus claimed that the days of novels were counted and that short stories were the novels of the future. Cooperus would write a series of short stories, which he published the then coming years in magazines such as De Locomotive, De Telegraph, and The Kroniak.